dancing is because when I go to parties, you like to dance, right? When we all go out, and we go out, you know, us young people, we like to go out nightclubbing and we like to dance. No, I'm seeing some like no's. Okay, well, when your children get older, they'll want to go clubbing and we'll remember those days when we were all 21. Even, <laughs> yes, in the back. <laughs> when we used to like going out dancing with our friends and having fun, yes, yes. Well, when you go out and you meet new people, there's three questions that you normally ask. One is, so I'm going to start with our first question here. What do you think arthritis is? So I want everybody have a moment and why we're thinking about, I'm getting you thinking about two things here. But let's think about what do you think arthritis is? And we're going to write them up on the board. So just throw, throw them at me. Pain. Pain. Come on, there's, there's so many more. I want to, come on, let's hear more. So we've got pain. Exhausting. Exhausting. Inflammation. Come on, there's got to be more. Isn't it an autoimmune disease? Yes, that's right. Needles. Needles. Medication. Yep. Come on, I, I want to hear more. Pain in the butt. Pain in the butt. <laughs> you must have arthritis. <laughs> Should I write pain in the butt up here? I will. Because we can. Swelling. Swelling. Come on, there's going to be more. Stiffness. Stiffness. What was that? No cartilage. Sorry. sorry. No cartilage. Oh, yeah, no cartilage. Whoop. Come on, there's more. Joints. Joints. Start thinking outside the box. Think a bit bigger than what we've already done. Hospital. Hospital. Oh, that's a good one. You're thinking outside the box. Open doors. Good one. Yep. Oh, look at this. Getting some great ones now. Independence. Jeez, I couldn't make you say anything, and now you're just saying lots. Of <laughs> Missing out, miss, and independence. I'm looking for two in particular. Two in particular. Elderly. And there's one more that I'm looking for. Youngsters. We'll call them kids. There we go. Can we, we can think of so many more things, can't we? There's so many more things. Have a look up here. Have a look at all of the different things. We've got pain in the butt. We've got cartilage loss. We've got open doors, self-esteem, mental health, hospital, exhaust, exhaustion, pain, missing, independence, and needles, inflammation, autoimmune, so many different things. And most of the people outside of this room tonight would think that all of these things on the board to do with arthritis would just happen to the elderly. But we in this room also know that it happens to kids. And that's why we're all here tonight, am I right? Yes. yes. So let's think about that. Think about all of those things that most of the people outside this room think that only the elderly get and that we're here because of kids. Now, who? somebody yelled out what the third thing is that you normally ask somebody at a party. Who was that? It came from the back. So our first one was, what's your name? The second one was, how are you? And what was the third one? What do you do? Oh, I hate that question. <laughs> who, who doesn't like that question? Who doesn't yet yeah, one? OK. <laughs> You're with me. Well. I suppose when I'm at a party and someone's asking me those questions, I try and talk to the other person as much as possible. So if I was having a conversation with you, I'd be like, oh, so you like oranges rather than mandarins? You know, like anything, anything, so that they will not talk about me. Because if they ask me that question, so what do you do? That, are, that opens up a whole lot of boxes. Now, when at this particular party, I was with one of my silly 
crazy, lovely friends. And uh, one, I was having a conversation with someone, and uh, he was next to me, and that person asked that dreaded question. And my friend said, have you got an hour? <laughs> <sighs> it's great to know some people laughed in that room at this question. Well, I was like, that, oh, what do I do? What do I do? People understand what a charity is. People understand, may understand actually what is involved in starting a charity, but it's taking that step back and realizing that some people have no idea what arthritis in children is. So when you have to explain to somebody, yeah, I, I have a charity, they're like, whoa, that's cool. And then they're like, and then you say, oh, I've started one. And they're like, oh, that's even cooler. And then they like, then you say, oh, it's for kids who have arthritis. They're like, what? What? Kids get up? No, my grandmother has arthritis. I'm like, yes, <laughs> good job. <laughs> Most people's grandmothers or fathers have arthritis. But yes, children get it as well. And so the next question that comes with this, whenever they ask me, and they're, they're pretty shocked right now because of this question, this comes next. How do kids actually get arthritis? Well, it's like ants. Who gets annoying ants or spiders or cockroaches in their house? Yeah, come on, hands up, yes. And what do we do to try and kill them? Come on, yell them out. Tell me, tell me. <laughs> Poison. And does it does it work? Does it work? Do, do they keep cutting? Yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah. You mostly going yeah sometimes. Well, it's like arthritis. The ants keep coming into the house, and you don't know where they're coming from. So until you can find out where those ants are coming from, that's the source. You'll then be able to get rid of them, right? So if you find out that they're coming from that tiny little annoying crack underneath the window. You can like seal that up, no more ants. That's like arthritis. If we can find the source of where the arthritis is coming from, it'll look like this. Wrong way. This isn't even my remote. There we go. It'll look like this. Nothing. There won't be any. Arthritis will keep coming in, but we'll know how to get rid of it. And that's why we're here tonight, to create awareness, to be able to tell people about it because then that will create a cure and more support for the children. Now what's the difference? That's the next question and most of us in here probably tonight are like so, what's the difference between kids' arthritis and elderly arthritis? I've listed a few up there, but I'll just run through some of them. So when you're a child, it easily affects more than one joint, which means that when you get it when you're older, it might just be one knee, might just be an elbow, might just be one joint. But if you get it as a child, it can affect two joints at the same time, plus more, depending on how rapid it is. The swelling happens, so when a joint gets infected with arthritis, the body's like, oh, quick, better stop it. So let's swell up like a giant balloon because that's going to make things better. You normally get it between birth and 18 years. And now when I turned 18, the question was asked, so do I still have juvenile arthritis? And the answer is yes. So that leads on to our next one. That it affects you while growing. So when you're a child and you're a baby, you're still growing, right? You've got this tiny little baby in your arms and you're looking down into its eyes and you're like, nothing could ever hurt my little child. It's smiling and looking back at you, laughing and crying with just, it's just amazing, it's just amazing. And nothing could ever hurt this tiny little being in, in your arms. We can all imagine that with our own children or children to come or children, babies that we might have now. Nothing could hurt them, right? Nothing. Arthritis can and that is how it affects a child while it's growing. When, it's in, when you get it in an elderly person or an older person that isn't a baby anymore, they've already grown. Most of you in this room, you've sort of already grown. You, you've got there, haven't you? You've figured out that you're either going to be really tall or like in between or really small, sort of like me for the rest of your life. 
And so because you finish growing, the arthritis will affect you in a different way. So when you're a baby and you're growing and it gets into your joints, that could eat it away. You could get it inside of you, so in your organs, so that affects your organs growing. There's just so many things I could list that how it affects a child rather than an elderly person. It also, you get education and life skills lost. When you're an elderly person, you've, you've got that. You've been through being 14 years old and having to keep up with the rest of the girls in the group and wearing the same fashion as them and your arthritis. You're like, I can't wear high heels, but every other girl's wearing high heels, but I want to wear high heels, but the arthritis won't let me. And then that leads on to a whole lot of other issues that you have within you as well as the arthritis issues as well. So that creates all those things that you can't do with your friends that you would like to do. And plus more, so many more complications that happen with medications, with doctors, with nurses, with family, with, with everything, because there's lack of awareness, because people don't know that this exists, that this is actually a thing. And that is why we're here. I'll keep saying that, but that, that is exactly why we are here tonight. So, now they'll want to know, well, my grandfather, he has osteoarthritis. What's the difference? Well, most children get rheumatoid arthritis. Osteoarthritis goes in there and bah, attacks the joint. It just wants to eat it, just wants to, like, it's, it's really, really hungry. But rheumatoid arthritis, it's not as vicious as that, but it is vicious in so many other ways. I've written a few up here. It starts at any time in life, but normally when you're younger. In osteo, it's when you're older. It comes on really, really quickly. You could be affected with one joint one day, and within three hours, the other one could be affected, or at the same time. Or your knees could be affected, and then suddenly, your fingers. It's just wham, crazy like that. Osteoarthritis, it's just like, I'm just a snail, and I'm gonna start here, and that's it. It's pretty much it. it it'll just go slowly, as slow as it wants. Joints that are affected, it's more smaller and larger joints rather than in osteo, it's just one side of the body. So you normally get like one, maybe your right knee, but on children with rheumatoid, it'll be both knees. It doesn't discriminate. You get pain, swollen and stiffness. Don't get me started on that. Uh, you don't really get that when you're when you've got osteo, it's more of a tender sort of thing that happens. And fatigue. Now, who in here who has arthritis, you get morning stiffness, right? Yeah, I see some nods. So annoying. But morning stiffness doesn't just last all morning. Mine's lasted 21 years. But in osteoarthritis, don't laugh at that. Come on, guys. I thought you loved me. <laughs> in osteo, it'll like just be there for a little bit. Or it might not even happen at all. And then it'll just go away. You know, it just does what it wants to do. So now we know the difference. Why don't we know more kids with arthritis? Well, I've sort of narrowed it down with all the talking to the different children and the families and the parents and listening to everything they have to say down to these really four things that all comes back to the lack of awareness. Kids have it, but they don't know about it yet. Meaning that it's either in an early stage or they've maybe had a sporting injury and because of lack of awareness, they're like, oh, you just have a netball injury, it'll be fine, it'll go away, but it may never go away. They don't know the signs and symptoms, which is the same as habit, but don't know about it yet. Meaning they might do a sporting injury or they might fall off their bike or hit into the side of the table, as you said before, and it'll swell up. Some people are like, oh, it's just swollen for some weird reason, because they don't know that that leads to arthritis and they may or may not do anything about it. And they might go many years with their child in so much pain and not even know that there, there is treatment and help for them to try and get rid of it. And they like to keep it a secret. Man, I know so many kids and adults, so young adults my age, that like to keep it a secret because who wants to be labeled as an old person when they're eight years old? Anybody in here? No. That's why they keep it a secret, and that's why we don't know. And so that's why we're here, is to be able to show those children that they can speak out 
and that we care about them and that we are here to help them and that there are people out there. So more about me, me giving you all these facts and you're like, well, how does she know? Well, I'm a lifelong sufferer. I was diagnosed in 94, so I was 18 months old and I used to bum shuffle. Yes, proud bum shuffler. <laughs> so I used to bum shuffle around and then I got to a certain age where, your child, where you think your child should be able to walk, right? Well, I didn't, I couldn't, and my parents were like, come on, let's just do it. You know, you just, you just do it because you don't want your child to have something like arthritis, but they didn't know about arthritis at the time. So I walked around for a bit on my feet and I went back bum shuffling again. I can't actually bum shuffle right now. Sorry that you don't get to view that spectacle, but that's how what happened. Now, when you learn how to do something an easier, more effective, quicker way, you don't go back to the old way, right? No, you, you stay at doing the, the easier, more efficient, quicker way of doing things. And that's what happened. Why would, why would your child go from bum shuffling to walking, back to bum shuffling, back to the old way of getting around? So my parents were like, well, yes, something has to be wrong. So we went down here to the local doctor and they're like, well, we'll send you all the way to Stirling. So, you would have come, if you come up from the city, you would have gone past Stirling along the freeway, all the way to Stirling. Then the Stirling people were like, oh, you need to go to North Adelaide. Oh, wow, that was a trip, and all the way to North Adelaide. I wish North Adelaide was this close, I could just walk there every day. And then they were like, well, we think your child might have arthritis. We're gonna jab some needles into it and put it in some machines. Cool, awesome, exactly what an 18 month old child wants to do but you're gonna to have to go with women's and children's. Ah, oh, okay, that's cool. Oh, the way the women's and children's. Okay, I know it's just down the road, but it's a long way from up here. So we had all of the needles and things that had to happen that a child and a baby shouldn't actually have to go through. And then they were like, oh, you have arthritis. And my parents were like, what? The elderly people only get arthritis. How could my little bundle of joy, who's so happy and smiling, get an old person's disease? And then we went back home again. Yep, once again, I wish the Women's Insurance Hospital was that close because we had to go there every week for a really long time, <laughs> for many, many years, to see the only rheumatologist that deals with children in this state. Now, there are nearly 8,000 kids in Australia who have juvenile arthritis. So you can work that out with the states and territories if you want, if you're good with maths, or I could just tell you the answer. Too many. There are too many children with this disease for one doctor to have to look after them. Way too many. So from there onwards, it just spread throughout my body slowly. And as I started growing up, I just thought it was normal. It was normal to go to the doctor. It was normal to have needles. It was normal to have x-rays. It was normal to be called an old person even though I was five. You know, it's just normal to just drive to the hospital and be at the hospital and have friends as nurses and the hospital be your second home. So I don't really know what it's like to be normal. I don't know what it's like just to be able to put on my runners in the morning and go for a run or to be able to go to bed the night before and think, I'm gonna do this, 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 this the next day, because I know that I'm probably only gonna be able to get through maybe one and a half of those things that I plan to do, because fatigue sets in, pain sets in, just everything, just the arthritis just controls and just takes over and you have no control of stopping it or from keeping it from just go away, pretty much, just go away. You don't know, so I just don't know what it's like. So I've told this imaginary person that is here tonight that I met at a party with my silly friend who went, have you got an hour? It hadn't been an hour at this stage, just so I let you know. I hadn't like given him a full on lecture with a PowerPoint presentation that I'd pulled out of my phone. But the guy's like thinking in his head, wow, she's 21? The room lights up when she walks into it, she's the happiest person, she's talking to everybody here. She looks normal, she's healthy, she looks fit, she's, she's, what? Man, 
this person in front of him should be dead. Like, you just meet somebody like that at a party where it's fun and exciting and then bam. And so I can't really stop there. I have to keep talking to them because they want to know more about why I should be dead. Now, anybody in here takes Nurofen? Put your hand up if you take Nurofen. Raise it high, yeah. Have a look on the back of the Nurofen bottle or box next time you have a look at it. There's a thing on there because of me. Now, back when I was six, and when you're six, you're start starting school, and it's exciting, and it's nerve-wracking, and everything like that. And I was on Nurofen about three times a day because it was the only anti-inflammatory medication that was available at the time. Yeah, I know, right? It's an anti-inflammatory, and it's used on kids with arthritis. And I started to get this, oh, really bad pain in my stomach. I've never had children, but it, I, it was pretty bad. But all you ladies keep saying it's worse, but anyway. <laughs> so I had this really bad pain in my stomach and went down to the local GP and he said, oh, she's just nervous. It's like, dude, I, I have operations all the time and how am I nervous about going to primary school? I wasn't nervous. I had stomach ulcers, but they didn't know that. They just like, oh, she'll be fine. Just keep taking the thing that's making you get more stomach ulcers. Just, just keep going, like, it'll go away. It didn't go away. So I went in a hospital and they're like, okay, we're gonna stick a camera down you and I won't go into too much detail here. But it was an endoscopy, if we all know what an endoscopy is, they stick a camera into you to see your insides. Wonderful experience. You get jelly and ice cream afterwards, so <laughs> look forward to it. And so I went in and they brought me under and uh, I was just gonna have an endoscopy and just have a few joints put steroids in. But while I was under, they couldn't stick the thing down my throat. See, I didn't say what it was. The thing down my throat. <laughs> because my tonsils and agnoids were all swollen up. For some reason, for some arthritis reason, they were just all nicely big and, yeah. And so they had to take them out. And they did everything else and it was all fine and happy and I was sleeping and I was eating jelly and ice cream. I was laughing it up. And I started to be really sick. Now, who in here has had an operation and they feel sick afterwards? Yeah, I never felt like that. Like, I've never, ever felt really sick afterwards because they have a tablet for that. So next time you go in, if you're eligible, take the tablet. It works wonders. And so I was really feeling really sick. And next thing I could just taste blood Ooh, down my throat. And next thing it just, yeah, it just went everywhere. And they were like, oh, it's fine, she'll be fine, she'll be fine. And then I just kept going and going and going. They're like, okay, we really need to do something. So this little six-year-old Sarah, who was probably about this big, yes, I was smaller than this, and uh, had to, I was lying there and they put the sides up on the bed and was like, okay, she's, she needs to go in now, now. We need to take her in, we need to take her. I remember this so clearly. Anybody been to the Women's and Children's Hospital? The fifth floor? That is the worst floor ever. I do not like walking down there. Lovely view of the playground, that's about it. Going along there, I remember them saying, she's gonna die, quick, quick. And all I could taste was blood just running down my throat and all in my mouth. This little six-year-old me, I just remember it like it was yesterday and it was horrible. It was ended up that they didn't stitch it up properly. I could have died twice that day and so many other times that I just may not know about yet. A six-year-old child going through all of that, as well as having an elderly person's disease. Yeah, that's pretty much shaped me to what I am now because of all this stuff and because of that as well. But your mind, I tell people, it's very strong. It's very powerful. You can make it do anything you believe that you can do. I have so much pain every day, but I just forget about it. You can forget about it. People procrastinate things. That is the most annoying thing when someone's like, oh, I can't do this. I'm like, oh my gosh, you can, you can, you can do this, you can. So many people say, I won't. So many people say, I can't. So many people just come up with so many stupid excuses not to do things. 
Man, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to walk tomorrow after it. Today, tonight, all this amazing setting up of all this, I don't even know. Tomorrow I could be like skipping around with the daisies. I don't know. So I like have to do the best I can right now, today. And so when people say I can't, or I won't, or they're like, oh, I just, I'm gonna do that next week. I'm like, just do it tomorrow. Why can't you do it tomorrow? Why can't you even do it today? So that's what I want you to do right now. I want you to think, think about something that you are procrastinating about. So I didn't really know it yet, but I was shaping modern medicine. And when I say that, like when I actually wrote that down, I was like, wow, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. You know, I'm not just helping kids with arthritis and to be able to help them. Like medication, whenever a new medication came out, I was like, Sarah, do you want to try this? Would you like to try this medication? I was like, I don't know, I'm like six. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> but they did it anyway. And so now, kids who are just getting the disease, they know that, hey, this child should go on Embril, or this child, should, only kids with arthritis and he would know this, but you know, this kid should go on this other toxic medication because it'll help them quicker and it'll make it better. Yes, see that face? I'll explain that face a bit later. <laughs> so as I said before, there's only one child arthritis doctor in South Australia, and that does need to change. And that is why we are here, to create awareness so that more people know so that more people in university and people uh, studying, I go and talk to a lot of doctors and nurses who are studying and still trying to figure out what they want to do. And most of the time, juvenile arthritis isn't even mentioned in their course. So how are we supposed to get more rheumatologist doctors about children if they don't even know it exists until I go in there and tell them all about it and how amazing it is to study and, and they all just want to study me afterwards. But that's another story. <laughs> so after being diagnosed with arthritis, yes, the cute baby photos, mum, I can see you being like, oh, they're so cute. Yes, after being diagnosed, it slowly just spread throughout my whole body. It had no shame. It just was like, I'm going to go here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then wham. Oh, now I'm going to attack her inter internal organs and see what I can do there and mix that up a little bit. Ooh. How exciting. It wasn't really that exciting. But so every little thing that I do, we celebrate. Like, I've never been able to touch my foot to my bottom. Now, who in here can do that? Come on, everyone should put their hand up. Yeah, that's right. And I did it once. When I was eight, I was in class. I remember very clearly, I was sitting on the ground, blue carpet all around. I was reading a book with my friends. I had friends, and uh, I was like, what's that feeling? And I looked, I was like, oh my goodness, oh, I can do it. And none of my other friends understood, or the teacher had no idea why I was so excited, but I went home and I was like, mom, I did it, dad, I did it, 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 I did it. You know, like silly little things like that are really big, really big and exciting. And the first time I was able to touch my feet, that was exciting. I was like, oh, now I know what's down there. You know, things like <laughs> toes, people, and talking about my toes. <laughs> so when a child has arthritis, you celebrate all of the little things, don't we? I'm looking at the back now. You celebrate all the little things that your child does with arthritis. Doesn't matter how small it is or how insignificant it is. You always celebrate it because to a child of arthritis, it means so much. It means the world to them. Now when I was nine, a lovely thing happened to me, uveitis. Nothing to do with the sun. Does anyone know what uveitis is in the room besides the people that know who I am? <laughs> no? Nobody wants to give it a guess? No one wants to give it a shout out? Yes. It's to do with your eye, yes. <laughs> it is arthritis in the eye. So it's just like how it goes in and attacks your joints and completely wants to destroy them. It does that in your eye too. Arthritis has no limits. 12% of children who have arthritis in their eye will go blind. Hello! Anyway, see, I said little things, celebrate, <laughs> even though they're not good. So uveitis is where it goes in and then it causes a thing called cataract sometimes. 
Now, a cataract formed with me because the doctors had no idea about the disease, as usual, and they were like, oh, Sarah, go on this eye drop. Oh, no, there's another one. Go on this one. Oh, this one might work better. Go on this little one. So I went on all of them, every one of them, and they caused a cataract, and people who know what a cataract is, it blocks the light from going into your eye and hitting the back of your eye and then coming back out again. And that, that's how you see. So when something's in the way, you can't see. So there's always that risk when only one eye is affected that it'll go the next one. So they had to think long and hard, oh, should, should we operate? Should we do something? Should we not? They finally did, thank goodness. And they put an eye patch on me. And I was like, okay, after, after an operation. And I was sitting there. I really need to take this eye patch off now. It's been three days. It's like, I really need to take it off now. Really need to just open my eye and just see if it worked. Really just need to do it. And you know, when you've been blind in that eye for so long, you're like, I wonder if it's going to work. They didn't even know if it was going to work. So that, that's a good amount of hope, isn't it? And they had to get a doctor in from like overseas to do it because they were so afraid. And so I'm sitting there with my eyes closed, I'm like, I'm gonna take it off, I have to take it off, I have to take it off. So I did a countdown, and I want everyone to join in the countdown. I'm gonna close my eyes, you can all close your eyes too, so you can enjoy the experience. So close our eyes, please don't leave the room where I have my eyes closed. <laughs> Good, you're laughing, that means you're still here. Okay, so we're gonna count down from three again, ready? Three, two, one. I could see the other moment. Yay, I can see again. Mom, I can see. Dad, I can see. Yes, I can see. I can see. It worked. It worked. It worked. In your faces, doctors. Do, 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 do. Anyway, and so see every little thing. You celebrate. Didn't last very long, though. The arthritis got back in there and created this eye gunk, which then they had to put like a new lens in there, and that didn't work. So it was the eye patch moment again, closing my eyes, counting down. <gasps> I can see, 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 I can see. I love doing the happy dance. I do it so often, it's so good. Um, I don't get to do it very often, so yep. <laughs> and that didn't last long either, so I had to go back in again. I had more lots of steroids, and I was still worrying about, oh, is the arthritis going to go into the other eye or not? Because if it affects the other eye, it can spread quicker, it can do more damage, it can be more horrible, so it's like, they've got to take that risk sometimes. Happen again, close my eyes. I can see, 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 I can see. You guys aren't really that excited anymore because I've done it too much. And that happened a few more times, like forever and ever. And then they just gave up. They're like, oh, that's it. Well, it didn't work. We don't know anything else. We don't know how we can help you anymore. Pretty much like, yeah, just go away into a corner because we can't help you anymore. But I was like, okay, that's cool. I've got so many other things I want to do with my life. I'm just going to completely ignore being half blind forever. There was a glimmer of hope last year around my 21st birthday. I was so excited. I was like, yay, the doctor can help. There's a doctor that can help. There's a doctor that can help me. I had a big fundraiser for it. And then, nah. Uh, but you keep going. And that's why we're here. We're here because I did this. <laughs> to organize, to create awareness about children and arthritis so that this won't happen anymore. And that, so that there'll be more awareness, so there'll be more doctors and there'll be more support so that people will know more about it and how that they can treat them much quicker. So as I said before, 12% of children will go blind. That's a lot of kids. So there's eight, nearly 8,000 in Australia. So do the maths figure that out, but I can tell you the answer, we already know what the answer is, too many. Too many kids will go blind because of arthritis. And if you come up, if you've been up and talked to me, you will see that one eye is lovely and blue, the other eye is green, yeah. And it's shaped like Mickey Mouse too. My pupil doesn't move, it's just stuck. It's like, yeah, today I'm gonna roam over to this side, or I'm gonna be back down here, or, nah, I'm just, it just has a mind of its own. It doesn't get bigger, it doesn't get smaller. Now you're all looking at my eyes. <laughs> I'll just stare a bit wider for you for a few moments. So that's what happens. And it's lazy, so I hope it's actually looking at you. I hope it's actually doing what it's told. <laughs> but then when I was 12, when all this was happening, yes, this is me. 
this is me, I was treading water for the first time in a swimming lesson because water is so great for people with arthritis because it takes so much pressure off of your joints. And when you do something for the first time, you don't want to stop, do you? You just want to keep going. You just want to keep doing that thing. You just want to keep, keep going. So that's what I did. And then I got out of the pool and I was like, oh, that, no, that doesn't feel right. Went to the physio, oh, you're fine. It's just a netball injury. I don't play netball. I've never played sport ever in my life. I can't because it hurts. Okay. Well, nobody else knows anything, so we just kept going back and going and seeing them. And then the arthritis was like, haha, it's my day to attack this joint. I was like, bam, and it went. And now there's bone on bone and cartilage loss and all of that crazy stuff that shouldn't happen to a child that's growing. And that is why I'm small. So here's a little diagram of x-ray of what my hip actually looks like. So normally there is some space in between the head and the hip bone. That's why if you don't have any problems with your hips, there'll be a lovely black space in between there. But that's me. Just this side though. Just this side. And so there's a spur on the side. It's a bit hard to see. It's a little tiny bit of bone that sticks out. So I can't sit on the ground and cross my legs or my heel to touch my bottom. And I can't put my leg all the way out to the side. Now I'd love it if we could all stand up and we're gonna be ballerinas and stick our legs out to the side to see, oh, come on. Oh, oh, we don't wanna be ballerinas, Sarah, today. <laughs> okay, so you can hold onto a chair if you want or onto the table and see how far you can swing your leg out to the side. See how far you can go. Yeah, if you can bring it up. I don't want to see this though, I don't want to see like, I can go really far, Sarah. <laughs> I just want you to stay nice and straight, see how far you can go out. Yes, we're pretty far, yes. Over here with the Ford man, yeah, yeah. And the, uh, yeah, they're pretty. <laughs> don't fall over, don't fall over. So we can all go out pretty far, right? Yeah, sit on down, it's great, great ballerinas. Class is over for today, thank you, you can all take a seat. But I can't do that. So imagine not being able to swing your leg out to the side. Now that was opens like a whole bag of beans there as well, like getting into a car and you have to move it or like to sit on a, on a horse or sit on a chair or to sit on a motorbike. You just can't spread that far to be able to get over it because of the, the spur that's stuck on the side. From there, they tried all these wonderful medications that the children at the back will probably recognize. Methotrexate is a toxic cancer med medication. Why the hell is someone with juvenile arthritis being on <laughs> Anyway, and so I was on that. So I tried many different forms of that one. And it's affected me in so many different ways that I can't actually brush my teeth in my house because of the way the medication tasted. It just scars you. Even just saying it, it's just bleh, right now, bleh. I had a thing where you, my mother would squirt it into my mouth. I'd have my water in one hand, toothbrush in the other, scull the water down, brush my teeth, go to bed, because it makes you feel very sick afterwards. So they tell you to take it at night time. I actually think they tell you, I think you just figured that one out for yourself. But yeah, so you take it at night time so you don't actually feel sick during the day. And then my emerald drug here, the wonder drug, thank the people at this place were amazing. They sent it out and I was on it. And when I couldn't, when I was stuck in the wheelchair and that was when I was, back with my hip, and I was stuck. I couldn't walk, couldn't move, I couldn't do anything for myself. Couldn't go to the bloody toilet. Couldn't do anything. Like somebody, my poor mother, this 12, 13 year old daughter, who was like graduating primary school and going to high school, had to help her go to the toilet. Yeah, moving on from the toilet. And so I was stuck in a wheelchair for three years and I couldn't walk, and then I went on this amazing medication, and I could walk the next day not being able to walk for three years and then bam, just be able to walk. Small things like being able to walk were celebrated so much. And then from there they were like, oh, let's go on this other drug, Sarah, because the emerald stopped working, caused more side effects. 
because that's what happens when you go on a medication when you have arthritis. No awareness about the disease, so they don't know what to do with the drug. They just boot you on it and they're like, oh, now it does this, 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 and this, and this, and this. So we got on that one. Eh, it works for a while, but it doesn't work forever. And then as I got older, I got lupus. Now, does anyone in here know what lupus is? Minus bread. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sort of, sort of. Well, if you didn't know, these celebrities down here actually have lupus. Now, you can see it. Seal's, seal is a bit more obvious because of the things on his face, but lupus can make you go, well, it's an autoimmune disease, but it affects you way, way many more than what our, way, uh, other ways than arthritis does. So you get headaches, you get memory loss, they just like forget things. I could be driving somewhere that I drive all the time. So I'm just like in my little car. Apparently, I'm like really close to the steering wheel when I'm driving. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. <laughs> really close to the steering wheel. And then I, next, next thing, I'm like, where am I going? What am I doing? I was like, oh, oh no, I forgot something. I totally freak out. And that's the lupus. The lupus just comes in whenever it wants to and ruins my day. You get sort of like tingly feelings in your body and in your fingers. You get shortness of breath and pain in the chest. When I was practicing this, it came on, and I was like, oh, I'm going to sound like I don't do any exercise when I'm doing my speech, because it was coming on. And so sometimes it's really hard for me to breathe. And I'm a fitness instructor, and I exercise every day because it's so good for my arthritis and keeps the pain away. That it comes on, and you're like, oh, come on, just breathe. But I have no control. It just happens. It just happens whenever it wants to. Thankfully, it hasn't happened today. You get still the pain and the swelling in the joints over there in the other corner, but you also feel sick and nausea just whenever it wants to. So I could be like out somewhere. I could be standing up here right now. I could be sick, but I'm not going to tell you. And, <laughs> and it just comes on. It'll come on. You get really tired, so that makes it come on. So I mean, there's so many different factors that trigger it, but sometimes it just comes on by itself. So if I'm tired, if I've been out too long during the day, if I've just been standing up, one thing will happen. I'll feel sick, then I'll feel grumpy, then I'll feel tired. But I'll feel grumpy, so I won't want to go to sleep, but I'm so tired that then it makes the grumpiness worse. It's the same as everybody else, but it's just like quadrupled and so much more. And so many other things, like rashes on the face and on the skins, you notice on my hands and on my face, that's out of my control. That's lupus. But thank you for makeup, though. It's really good. It's just a crazy thing to happen. I've already got arthritis. I've already got this pain. I've got this stiffness. I, uh, all of this stuff happens. And then you get uveitis, and then I get spurs, and I get chondrolysis, and I lose bone, and I lose cartilage. I've got pain. I've got stuff that I don't have to deal with because nobody else has to deal with this stuff in my friendship group. I don't know anybody else out there who has it as bad as me that's 21 or 20 or around my age group. Nobody. And it's so common, but I just don't know. That child or that young adult might just be keeping it inside of them because they're too afraid to tell the world that they have it and that they have to deal with all these things. And that's why we're here, as you know, to create awareness, to let these children speak up so they can be heard. I know in the room today I have some of my exercise ladies. Yeah, I can see you all. I'm a health and fitness trainer as well. Very, very crazy. I've just told you about all the pain I'm in and everything I have to do every day. But I'm like, come on, ladies, get on down. Give me some push-ups. Am I really that bad at the back there? Am I really? And they're all like, yeah, no. <laughs> Keep exercising every day. And when I go to universities and I talk about juvenile arthritis and I tell them that I lift weights and I love exercising, there's always one or two that come up afterwards and it's like, how much do you lift, Sarah? I'm like, <laughs> more than you, which is most of the time true. You see, somebody's going to come up afterwards and ask me that. It's OK. It's OK. You can come up. <laughs> so now I sort of inspire people in my class and do through the personal training. I see some nods yet. Through everything that I have to deal with, that I keep getting up every day, I keep exercising, I keep going, and they take that on and they push harder and they can... They're like, oh, Sarah, just, just do it. It's fine. If you weren't here, here pushing me, I wouldn't be doing this. 
So it's sad to think I'm only alive today because of medication, but with kids of arthritis, you can't just push it down. You just let it go. You just keep living your life. And I posted an Instagram post recently where I said about why I give up now. Most people say, after they hear my story, I would have given up. I would have gone into the dark corner where Reese is. I would have just stayed there. I would have not have bothered. Reese is not in a dark place, don't worry. But would not have got out. I would not have kept going. I just would have thrown in the towel and given up. And I say, why? Why would I have wasted 21 years of my life getting up every morning, going to hospitals, having injections, going to appointments, spending money to get petrol, to drive to appointments, to buy all the things, to do all of this today, to start my own charity. Why, why give up now? Why stop? Why go into the dark, dark corner and just throw in the towel and disappear so nobody can see me? Why? Why would I just throw everything that I've done to get here today away just because of a bit of pain and a bit of heartbreak and annoyance? Why? And I'd love it if you could take that away today. That there are children out there, we're already taking our procrastination item away, but there are children out there, just like the child, me, standing up in front of you, that has to do with all this every day, but we keep going. And when people say, I can't or I won't, I'm like, what's stopping you, man? What is stopping you from doing that? Is there pain? Is there stiffness? Are you afraid that you might not, you know, be able to... Do it, because you can do it. You're an able-bodied person. Just go and do it. There's nothing stopping you. I want you to take that away today, to keep pushing and keep going, knowing that there are kids out there who can't do it, that would absolutely love to do it. I know that I would probably love to do some of the things you do today in your lives, but I just may not be ever be able to, but I'm going to give it a good shot. I do volunteering as well, and that's why... I sort of love doing kids' arthritis. It's so much fun. I get to talk to parents. I get to talk to so many children with the disease and to brighten their days and to tell them that it's okay, that you're going to be fine. And that is why I started Kids Arthritis. Because of all the lack of support I got over the years, my 21 years, yeah, there's organizations out there that help, but they don't help kids with arthritis. So Kids Arthritis is the only organisation in Australia that just helps children and their families with this disease. There's 8,000 kids and there's nothing out there to help them until now. And that's why I started this. So when I started, I was like, now I need a reason to, you know, spread it. A way to spread it, a fun way to spread it. So I sent a message out to my friends and these friends responded. Thought it was a cool idea. And that's how we started Pranks Kids Arthritis. Now, people say when we're at parties and Reese and I are in the room, watch out. <laughs> Be careful because something might happen. It wasn't just pranking people. As much as fun as that is doing, I love pranking people for charity especially. Like if you ever need a reason now to prank somebody, to make somebody look funny or stupid, you can do it for kids with arthritis. I talk at events as well, and this made people want to open up. And I slowly started opening up too. Going 20 years without any support from the people and from communities and from people around me, minus my family who were always there for me. Yes, you're always there. And uh, just needed something, and I just needed to slowly open up and just tell people about it. And that's really hard when you've been through everything that I've just said. And then as I became more accepted, people, they sort of started coming to me and, and talking to me about it more than what they did before. And they knew that I was starting something new and starting something that was going to help them so much. Not just through awareness, but through support. Because once you get that, then they'll start talking out and then more people will know about it. And they'll start to feel more accepted within their friends, in their families, within their schools. The most annoying thing when growing up was when you had to change year levels and you had to see a new teacher. 
And I had my little book, and I was like, so I have arthritis. You have what? I'm like, yeah, I have arthritis. And you'd have to sit down all the time, and you'd have to tell them about the disease and how it affects me and how I can sit on the ground or how I needed a thicker pen or how I needed this and how I needed that, how I can sit on the ground, how I needed a chair, all these crazy little silly things that I needed that none of the other kids needed and tell them all about it because I just didn't know. And that's what kids' arthritis will be changing. You may have seen some of these on the internet as well that we've started. We then started, could you give a, ne a child a needle every day? Could you? Could you do that? No? Yes? Everybody in here is totally cool with giving their baby a needle every day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is it a cat or a dog? <laughs> no. But, but with a child, if you have a child with arthritis, you have no choice. They either scream in pain and don't be quiet, or you give them a needle to make the pain a bit better so they don't scream and cry at you and that you are trying to help them. You have no choice. You just have to do it. You just have to. And that is what is so sad, that there isn't more help out there for them, that the only way sometimes to help that child is to give them a needle to relieve the pain. We then grew and we started pranking more people, which is awesome. You can see it up on YouTube. I had to get another cameraman. That's how fast it grew. And then we started our campaign, Wear Blue for Kids Arthritis, which is what we are all hashtagging tonight online. And all of these people jumped in and got involved. And that's when I knew that, man, I'm onto something. This is awesome. People are supporting me. I started, bam, telling everybody, opening up more. It just, it just feels more accepting. I don't know if people can understand. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, <laughs> if you can, it's really hard to explain, but it's just like people just started accepting me and understanding everything. And it just was wonderful for a change that somebody wanted to listen to me. And I kept a lot of self-doubt that people didn't want to and that people would never understand. And I know that's how kids with arthritis feel. And that's why we're here. So now you probably want to know what you can do to help. Well, you've come along tonight, and I'd love it if you could all talk about it. Word of mouth is the fastest way to get a message across. And so if we can just talk about it to one person, that one person will talk about somebody else. And then there might be three people in that group that that person talks to, so then those three people will go off and it'll spread like that. You can prank someone for charity. That is the funnest way you can help us out because we love having a laugh along to everybody's pranks that they send in. Donations and liking and sharing us on the internet. Thank you for coming. Thank you for dressing in blue. And spread the word that kids get up. Here.